The introduction of the new diplomas has brought a long-standing educational dilemma into sharp focus. How can we help students avoid being influenced by gender stereotypes when making their option choices? ABC, c'est quoi? Girls are still more likely to take languages and arts, and boys more likely to take geography and IT, and maths and physics at A-level. This programme focuses on two schools in Norfolk that are trying two different strategies to address gender stereotypes. Heatherset High School has formed gender discussion groups to help students analyse and challenge traditional views on what girls and boys should do. Five miles away, the Hewitt School is part of Open Opportunity, a partnership of five secondary schools and a further education college that are addressing the issue of gender during their diploma taster days. What we've been doing today is running a series of taster sessions uh, to give the students an experience of courses that they might not have experienced as part of their Key Stage 3 curriculum. All boys think, uh, think bad about themselves when they think they've got a girl's job or something or they're pointed at and laughed at if they go for like hairdressing in diploma. And I think it's a pressure just to do something which your friends are all going to be in. I've kind of always been interested in more like engineering and like how things work. My dad's encouraging me, but my mum's kind of like, she wants me to do more girly things. My mum suggested I get a job at a hairdresser's and it's just not the sort of thing I like. It's six or seven. Yeah. Okay. Parents are a, are a big influence. Some of them are very uh, stereotyped and saying, you know, boys can't do that sort of thing or girls can't do that sort of thing. Um, but others are very supportive and, and, you know, encourage their children to do whatever they want to do, regardless of, of how it's traditionally been. At the beginning of the Diploma Taster Day, when students are allowed to choose for themselves which diploma to try, no boys pick hair and beauty studies and very few girls choose construction and the built environment or manufacturing and product design, despite efforts to include them. They're taking a piece of steel like this and polishing it and ending up with a product like that. Uh, we deliberately chose items of jewellery uh, because we're trying to make the thing less gender specific. We want to get more girls into this area and we thought jewellery might be attractive to them. OK, we're making the dog tag, but we're... Um... We're making it smoother so it makes it more shiny. More boys seem to enjoy making stuff because they're manly. And girls just like doing other stuff like hair beauty and stuff like that. I just do it anyway. The boys seem as if they're more aggressive this morning. They're going at it with far more gusto than the girls. The girls are a little apprehensive, but I think in time they should enjoy it. I think it's just that girls need to be made aware of the, the opportunities that's out there for them. Um, you know, they could have a very interesting career in, in engineering or technology. Look at your drawing, get some bricks, OK, and just build those walls. After a morning having a go at the subjects they want to try, the school tackles the stereotypes head on. Boys and girls are divided into separate groups to get a taste of subjects they've probably never thought of before. We are pushing our students to take decisions that's in their best interest rather than deciding, well, I want to do this because I'm a boy or I want to do this because I'm a girl, because that really is limiting uh, their choices and, and perhaps limiting their future life chances. Okay. The diploma's given us a way of tackling some long-standing gender stereotyping issues, really. They're much broader in context than perhaps the subjects that existed before them. So, for example, construction and the built environment diploma um, is much wider in its scope than construction courses previously. It includes architecture, it includes town planning and so on. So hopefully I think we, we think that these give us another way of maybe taking on some of the prejudices, some of the stereotypes that have existed. The quality control person, i.e. the building inspector that comes round, she may come round and, and look at the quality of the structure that's put up. I thought it would be like sort of manual labour, like on-site laying bricks and stuff. But, I, but it's more office work as well. So I'm sort of, I'm interested in maths and IT, so that involves that as well. So yeah, it's really good. 
I really did like it. I'm seriously going to consider the diploma in construction. But that, that, one's too that, big. that needs to bond over there, so you need to put something on there. The last one I did, the girls were the best group out of the lot. They were much better, much better motivated, um, a, a very high level of intelligence, and indeed the type of people we really need in construction. The trouble is, people think we need butch sort of manual workers, and we don't need those. We need a few of those, but generally we need highly skilled people that are well motivated, and girls fit the bill often. Sit and pin it here. A male role model in the hair and beauty taster makes a difference to the boys. With myself and Carol doing the diploma tasters, they see straight away that there is a male in the room. And that bends a minute. Men should be allowed to take on like salon work, everything. Is it given folding into the middle? I think it's changed quite a bit since like a while ago. Things went like more tolerant and everything. But if we've done a process such as a, a bleach or a perm, we have a very acidic product, because that works as a scale. So what we're trying to do is we've gone very acidic, we then try and balance it down to a very alkaline, yeah? Because the hair and beauty diploma says hair and beauty, it does not mean you'll be working in a salon necessarily, OK? Jobs which we could go into would be things like beauty or spa therapists, business managers, entrepreneurs. Um, this diploma would be great to lead onto a job within sales or understanding the product manufacturing market, which is embedded quite a bit into the diploma. A lot of people think, oh, girls, hairdressing girls, straight away. But when you get to it, a lot of boys will do it as well. So you can't just say, ha-ha, you're doing hair and beauty. It's not like that. It's more than just doing someone's hair. It's a lot more science in it. Yeah, it could change some people's minds who didn't know they could do it. Just to look, do people's hair and look, paint someone's nails is a bit of a change. I think it's good that, like, girls and boys get to try different things, cos otherwise boys would have been, like, uh, hair and beauty, that's for girls. And... but they tried it, and boys who I've talked to who have done it, they've, like, really enjoyed it. I think it's quite good for school to show us different subjects that we could take, like hair and beauty. I thought it was quite fun doing the hair and everything, doing the nails. The teacher said that they, you won't be judged by what subject to take and that you can take any subject and they're not gender-based. When we come to monitoring and tracking through, um, those students have said that they're interested now in this area. Uh, we can now track through to who's actually applied. It could be that one or two, which is what we're hoping for, really, it's made a bit of a difference to. And we're trying all the time to um, challenge people's perceptions. And people never find out where their skills lie unless they try different things. To get round this problem. Another school in the area, Heatherset High School, has also decided to tackle gender stereotypes. It's getting students to look closely at why they're making the decisions they are about subject choices at GCSE and A-level. Staff are running discussion groups with Year 9s and Year 11s as part of the school's gender equality scheme. I think those gender stereotypical choices are very ingrained. I think they're very much part of, of where we are in society and I think the only way that we will really encourage young people to take a different route is by encouraging them to talk about it, to think about it, to have teachers raise it. If you choose a more masculine subject and you're a girl, it's just that you're a bit tomboyish maybe or it's not really seen as any more different, but I think boys are probably um, more likely to get maybe picked on or like just seen as being more different. Well, I think if you like, if you act or you go into dancing and you're a, and you're a guy, some people might think because of that that you're gay. A lot of coursework-based subjects boys don't do because you have to write it, then go over it, then redraft it before you even think about handing it in. I think that boys prefer to, like, answer questions that they don't know are going to be there, whereas I think that girls like to spend time over what they're doing and, and make sure that it's good enough for their standards. Why do you think, just purely, why do you think girls don't go on and do A-level physics? I mean, none of you are doing A-level physics. I wanted physics. to be. But I was just daunted because I've heard it's really hard because it's a lot different to how it is at GCSE. Yeah, I think when I went to the open day, it kind of influenced 
me not to, because I didn't really want to take sciences anymore because I was thinking about them. But when I got to, like, the open days, I thought that they made it come across as, like, as if it was really difficult and you had to do, like, really hard work towards it. While Year 11s question what lies behind their A-level choices, the Year 9s are thinking about GCSE choices. And for the younger group, it appears parental influence is significant. My mum and dad said I've got to do what I want to do, but they want me to do more academic things, like they want me to take things like two languages and history and geography rather than the ones that um, I enjoy doing. They like me to have like a variation between subjects and they've told me like some subjects that you can't do a lot with, like drama. In year nine, obviously, it's really important that we look at how we show the parents why certain subjects they might not think of being useful can be. So why creative subjects can actually be a really good way of releasing a lot of stress and a really good way of learning some important transferable skills. If they realise that their child can choose drama and still go on to do law, then I think that would allow them to give their children a little bit more choice in the matter as well. I was actually really genuinely surprised by some of the children's viewpoints and, and to be honest, really surprised at the fact that the gender divide really is still there amongst the children, particularly with um, the year nines. Do you think it's easier for girls to get away with choosing boys' subjects than it is for boys to choose girls' subjects? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if they choose, like, a girly subject, then they're just going to be like considered like a real wussy like girly thing because like if they do something like art, that's like girls are considered like a lot of the time more like creative, so it might be like a bit of a girly thing to do. So they might want, not want to do it because they might don't want to be considered like cowardly. It's easier for um, girls to try the probably more masculine subjects like maths and physics because there's a lot more careers that women can do in that area, whereas it's harder for the boys to do the girls kind of subjects like child development. I want you in. Groups of three, I want you in two of the same sex and one of a different sex. So two boys and a girl or two girls and a boy. Can you get into your groups, please, now? Go. I think there's masses to do now. I think it's, it's obviously highlighted that there is an issue there and I think we've got to be um, getting some positive role models into the classroom, um, particularly in science, um, from a female perspective, getting women in from different scientific disciplines. Um, and I'm really quite shocked by the attitude towards things like art textiles and um, art as a whole. And I think we've got to look at how, um, how we can actually get positive role models within the art side for boys um, to see that it's a viable career option. I think there are some really very interesting points that have come out from the students where I think it may be that we, we felt attitudes had changed further than perhaps they actually have. And so that's, that's exactly the reason for talking to young people. I think that in the past we've been guilty of just assuming that we're doing the right thing and I think we have to be much more um, aware of, what, of how we're actually influencing the children's choice because I think we are influencing without even realising it.